Bishop Gideon T.T. Fair, a man anointed by God to take the gospel to the marketplace, a pastor without walls, winning leaders from the world to the church, and developing leaders from the church to the world. And now, here is Bishop T.T. Fair with a pleasant word. It's such a blessing to come your way every Sunday morning with the word of God through this medium. I want to welcome all of you and your families from wherever you are watching. I want to welcome all of you. If you have not yet invited anybody to watch this, please do that now because the word of God is going to be a blessing to you and you want the same blessing for your loved ones as well. So make sure that you invite people to join this. Start a watch party or quickly share right now and let people know that bishop titi affair is on your screen with god's word undiluted and unadulterated it's going to be a blessing to you i'm so excited um that we are together to worship the lord and to bless the name of the lord i'm also so happy that despite the closure of churches as a result of covid 19 we can still use this medium to study god's word and to reach out to people i'm excited about the feedback we are getting about how people are getting so blessed so don't just get blessed alone make sure that others are also getting blessed as well it's also always a joy to get your feedback so don't just watch also send us your your comment and let us know that this word is blessing you and how we can also improve on reaching out to you for those of you who have been following us um in the last few weeks we started a series um discussing the laws that govern the three days of our lives we have already discussed that we all live for three days. We live yesterday, today, and the next day. In other words, we live in the past, we live in the present, and then we live also in the future. Um, your past has such impact on your today, and your today also has such impact on your future. And you need to understand all the three laws that govern these days so that you can have positive impact and the proper impact to be blessed we've already looked at the law of yesterday and we have also looked at the law of today today we are looking at the law of next day the law of next day so let's have a word of prayer and uh, then we come back to study the word of god father in the name of jesus i come before you together with my audience right now and we ask for your blessing your wisdom your understanding your power your presence as we study your word give us revelation give us information that will become a revelation and a revelation that will bring elevation to us in the midst of this covid 19 your word must bring us encouragement and your words must bring us an empowerment and lord in the name of jesus thank you it is done amen in jesus name so the law of next day another word for next day is tomorrow so keep that in mind now the law of next day states the only way to create the future is to see it the only way to create the future is to see it Several years ago, when I was a very little boy in Kumase, and I remember I was just in class four, and I was asked by my teacher what I wanted to become. And I said to my teacher, I wanted to be a pastor and a teacher. I remember repeating the same thing to my father when we also discussed about my future as a young boy. And I was around, just around um, eight or nine years old and i remember my father also asking me what i wanted to become and i said i wanted to be a pastor and a teacher and guess what i have become i become anytime i stand in the pulpit i remember that conversation anytime i uh, go to the lecture hall to deliver a lecture i remember that conversation see i saw the future that i have 
created for myself. What today used to be a future, I saw it when I was young and I created it. I also remember when I was in secondary school, despite the fact that I was in serious financial difficulties, and I remember in my secondary school, they were just giving nicknames to people and being a very staunch SU member, I knew that they were going to use my faith to make mockery of me. So I gave myself a nickname that was futuristic a nickname that was prophesying my future and my nickname was chancellor because i believed at the time that i was going to be i was going to own a university and surprisingly at that time government had not given go ahead for private participation in tertiary education but i could see my future and i prophesied it by giving myself the nickname the chancellor today i'm a chancellor of an university because what you see in the future is is what you create what you see in the future is what you create i have become exactly what i saw in the future i have created what i saw in the future so what you see now from today what you see in the future is what you eventually create the future you don't see you can't create it and i pray that god will open your eyes to see that future but what kind of eyes am i talking about in Ecclesiastes chapter chapter 2 and the verse 14, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, the Bible says, the wise man's eyes are in his head. The wise man's eyes are in his head. If I asked you now to go 20 feet from where you are now and then give write something on a piece of paper, give to someone and stand 20 feet from where you're standing, your own handwriting, it's going to be difficult for you to read that handwriting of yours 20 feet away from where you, you, you'll be standing. You, you, you know, but if I ask you to close your eyes and see into the future five years from today, with your eyes closed, you can picture the future five years from today. The difference is that the first one, 20 feet away from your own handwriting, you couldn't read. You were looking at it with your eyesight. But the second one, you were looking at it with your mind's sight. So when you close your eyes like this, you can imagine the future you want. You can create pictures of the future you want. You can create mental pictures of the future you are looking for. That is why we call the mind's eye. It is, it is the power of imagination, your ability to positively imagine the future, especially if it is inspired by the Holy Ghost, if it is inspired by the Lord. Whoever you have to become is already created and is embedded in the inside of you. Prayer allows that thing that is embedded in the inside of you to come to you in the form of imagination, inspired imagination. I pray for you that you will have inspired imagination. In Jeremiah chapter 1, from the verse 11 to the verse 14, you would discover an amazing scripture from there. Look at this. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled an amazing scripture an amazing scripture now i'm listening listen before we read further i want to explain something to you it looks like what you see determine your prophecy what you see determines your prophecy it looks like what you see determines your prophecy jeremiah what do you see i see an apple tree you are seen correctly. And then the prophetic word followed. Your prophetic destiny is determined by what you see. What you see in your future will determine your prophetic destiny. Now see again, in verse 30, the word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling. Look, I answered, it is tilting toward us from the north. The Lord said to me, this time God did not say you have seen correctly, but the Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. So the content of your sight, what you see, determines the content of your prophecy, of your prophetic word, your futuristic prophetic word. 
Are you here with me? Do you follow what I'm sharing with you right now? So Jeremiah, within a space of a short time, had seen two different things. One, the Lord said, you have seen correctly. And then there was a prophetic word in relation to what he saw. And then he saw another thing again. And there was a prophetic word that also was a direct relationship with what he saw. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see the next five years from today? What do you see in the next 10 years? What do you see in the next 20 years? That would determine your word from the Lord, your prophetic word from the Lord. And I pray for you that you will see correctly. I pray for you that you will see correctly. I pray that you will see correctly. Do not see that disaster. Do not see that negative thing. You must see that positive thing. Because as I speak to you right now, I can tell you on authority that your future is bright that there's something good in that future the past may not have treated you well today may have given you some challenges but hey your future is brighter than today your future is brighter than your past and i can prophesy that, that to you and if you can only see that positive thing in the future it will attract a prophetic word that will shape your future and that will help you in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8 from the King James Version, look at it. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So, so the Bible in the New Testament confirms the fact that there are eyes in our heads. And the apostle prayed for them and said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes in your head is a deeper understanding that you get about your life, about your future. And I pray the same prayer, that let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, be enlightened, be enlightened, be enlightened. See that prophetic destiny. See that good future. See that bright future. I pray for you right now. See it. May your eyes be opened to see. May your eyes be open to see. May your eyes of your understanding be open to see. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See it now. See it now. See that prophetic destiny. See that president. See that CEO. See that pastor. See that bishop. See that success. See that company. See that greatness. See that abundance. See that healing. See that longevity of life. See whatever positive you are desiring. See it. See it. And you shall have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why must you focus on the future? Why must you see the future? Why is it important for you to see so you can create it? Now, take the word, the letter O. The letter O to stand for opportunity. Take the letter O to stand for opportunity. How many O's are there in the word yesterday? No. There is no O in the word yesterday because there are no opportunities in your yesterday. Take the word today. How many O's are there in today? Only one O because there are only few opportunities in today. But take the word tomorrow. How many O's are there in the word tomorrow? Three O's. Because there are many opportunities ahead of you. May God open your eyes from today to see all these opportunities. The past may not have gone well for you. Today, you may have been going through some challenges. But it is not the end of your life. It is not the end of your life. Look, lift up your eyes and see. Lift up your eyes and see. There are opportunities ahead of of you may god enlighten your eyes of understanding may god open your eyes may god open your eyes may the king of kings and the lord of laws open your eyes to see to see the future to see what he has for you in the name of jesus so what does it mean to create your future creating your future is the ability to see the opportunities of tomorrow. To see the opportunities of tomorrow from where you are today. To see the opportunities of tomorrow from where you are today. When Lord departed from Abraham, the Bible says that the Lord said to Abraham, from where you are, lift up your eyes. The land you see, 
I will give you. God doesn't need to take you from where you are to another place for you to see the future. Wherever you are, no matter where you are, you may be in a village, you may be in a city, it may be in a very uh, good place, may be in a very bad place. Wherever you are, lift up your eyes. Whatever you see, God will give you. Whatever you see, God will give you. Wherever you are from today, if you lift up your eyes to see the opportunities of tomorrow, God will give you. The Lord my God will give you. I want to now share with you the three habits of those who see the future. The three habits of those who see the future. If you are really seeing the future, you are really seeing the opportunities of tomorrow, here are the three habits of those who see the future. You will have the three habits if you are seeing the future. Those who see the future and see the opportunity of the future, they decide who they spend today with. They decide where they spend today and they decide what they spend today on. Because what you see tomorrow will dictate what you do today. When my first daughter was little, very little, she had asked me for something and I said to her, I will do it tomorrow. So the following day, she came to me in my bedroom and said, Daddy, when I asked you for this thing yesterday, you said you would do it tomorrow. And today is tomorrow. Wow. Today is tomorrow. And that was a message from her. And just God just spoke through her to me. And the Lord said to me, son, your today must always be your tomorrow. He said, whatever you do today must address your tomorrow. He says, he said the difference between a visionary and a fantasy chaser is that both see tomorrow. But for the visionary, what the visionary sees tomorrow determines what the visionary does today. But what the fantasy chaser sees tomorrow does not address what he does today. Since then, my today has always been my tomorrow. Whatever I do today is determined by what I see tomorrow. Whatever I say today is determined by what I see tomorrow. The friends I build today is determined by what I see tomorrow. The way I work is determined by what I see tomorrow. And if you are seeing something tomorrow, it might dictate what you do today. And here is what the people who see tomorrow do today. Number one, they decide who they want to spend today with. They decide who they want to spend today with. And here are the, the people they spend today with. Number one, they spend today with people who will not take them away from their God. Because you know that without God, you have no tomorrow. So for tomorrow to become a success for you, you need to build a strong relationship with God through his son, Jesus. And those who see tomorrow, they know it. So they do not allow the people who will take them away from God to get into their lives. Look at you, we are Christian, and your friends are unbelievers who are discouraging you from serving God and from committing your life to God. They are making a mockery of your faith, and yet you can stand on your grounds and defend your faith. It is only Christians that people make mockery of our faith and make mockery of our Lord Jesus with ease because we do not defend our faith enough. There are other religions that you can never, never make mockery of their faith. Let nobody take you away from God if you are seeing tomorrow. Number two, your goals. Those who, who see tomorrow never allow people to take them away from their goals. Because their goals is futuristic. It addresses their tomorrow. Then finally, their goal, their goal. They do not allow people who get into their life to mess up their financial life. They have financial discipline. They have their financial discipline. Because your God plus your goals plus your gold will make you a giant. Number two, they decide where they want to spend today. They decide where they want to spend today. See, three places where they spend their today because of their tomorrow. 
the place of adjustment, the place of abundance, and the place of abode. The place of adjustment. They will go anywhere as far as that place can help them develop the right set of attitudes. I have spent my time in my place of adjustment. Since I became a Christian at the age of 14, I have spent my last 38 years in my place of adjustment. And you know where my place of adjustment is? My place of adjustment is the church. That is where I am helped to develop the right set of behaviors that can guarantee my success. There are many people who think that all that the church does is that we go to church and we pray and we fast. I have made all my major decisions from the information I heard from the pulpit, hearing my pastors preach, hearing teaching service and learning from the Lord. I have made my decisions from there. Church is my place of adjustment. That's why I don't joke with church. Consistently, I spent my days in church. It helps me cultivate the right set of behaviors that can guarantee my success. And then, those who see the future spend their time at the place of abundance. Where is your place of abundance? It's your place of work. Your place of work. If you see the future, the next place you spend your time is your place of work. You will not sit down with people who do no work lazy people and sit down the whole day and discuss football discuss boxing discuss things that does not contribute to your purpose in life spend your time in your place of abundance then the third place where they spend their time their place of abode create a family build a family spend time make time for your family those who see the future know that they must build a solid functional family for the future no matter how successful you are without a solid functional family people doubt your integrity and have no respect for you so these places are the safest places on earth your church your work and your house now the third thing they do they now end the sermon for today the third thing they do is that they decide what they want to spend today on what they want to spend today on. Three things they spend today on. Their values, their vision, and their victories. They spend today because of what they see tomorrow. Cultivating values. Building moral standpoint. Ensuring that they are building integrity. And then they develop their vision. Their futuristic image. Their desired future image. They develop their vision. And then finally they build victories they win life is a war to get to to get to that future you are looking for you must fight to get there and you must make sure you win battle battle fight any obstacle that will stand on your way fight your way to victory the future that you see before you can get there you must face that challenge you must clear the hurdle. You must leap over that wall. You must move that mountain. You need to be strong. You need to be strong and have faith in the Lord. I pray for your future. I command blessings into your future. I speak into your future. Let the mistakes of yesterday, let them not hijack the brightness of your future. Let not the difficulties of today discourage you from your future. I speak into your future. I see light at the end of that tunnel. Don't be discouraged. I speak into that future. Something great is coming to the future. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is sealed. It is delivered. In Jesus' name. Rise on your feet. And celebrate yourself. And celebrate your future. God has already taken the lead. He's already gone into that future. And is preparing that a place for you. I was telling my family the last time. That the Bible says. That God. Goes into our future. And looks for places. Where we will pitch our tent. I was just telling my family. How I got here. I can't tell. But all I know is that I saw the future. And God took ahead and went ahead. God took the steps and went ahead of the future I saw. 
and found me a place where I will pitch my tent. God will do the same for you if you see the future through his eyes. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. I declare the week a week of brightness, a week of success, a week of good news, a week of encouragement, a week where God will do something new, a week where your eyes of un your understanding will be enlightened. It is done in Jesus' name. If you want to have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, please pray this prayer with me so that you can make heaven with us. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I believe that you died for my sins. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. In your name I have prayed. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you are born again. The Lord my God has written your name in the book of life. And when churches are opened again, please come over to the Pleasant Place Church and meet our Pleasant Church family and worship with us. You are blessed and highly favored. You are blessed and highly favored. May the Lord God enlighten your eye of, your eye of understanding this week. Bye-bye. God bless you. Love you all. Amen. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 19. In 2020, God is going to do a new thing in your life. So don't give up. Stand out and be counted. And make the Pleasant Place Church your church. In 2020, Pleasant Place Church, a new season is emerging.